Okay, I've got it over here at the drill press. We're just gonna start drilling them out. I've got the quarter inch bit. So we're gonna start with that one. And I like to just line up the bit with the, with the mark we made on the center punch. Hold it in place. Take your clamp here and clamp the blade down. It's gonna leave it zero chance of it helicoptering on you. You don't want this thing spinning if this, uh, if this bit catches the blade. So this will keep it securely in place for you. Okay, I've got our pinholes drilled, and I've just taken another bit, I believe this is a 7 32nd, and I'm just going to drill some random holes in the handle just to lighten it up and give the epoxy somewhere to go, and we glue up the handles. Okay, I've got a bunch of holes drilled for the handle and the next step we're just going to take and put some thumb jumping on the top of the spine here uh, just to give it a little more character and add a little more grip. So we'll take it over and we'll do that. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in our vise. I've got some soft jaws here to keep it from marking up the blade too much. We're just going to take a checkering file and put some jimping into the top of the spine. The way I like to do it, I just hold the knife in my hand the way I would, the way I would normally use it. And I just take a sharpie and kind of mark where I want that jimping to be located at. So somewhere right there. Just take your checkering file and it's a little hard to get these started but once you kind of get the uh, the groove cut it'll just fall right back in place but to start with you got to be real careful try to keep it straight put a lot of downward pressure on it
Okay, we've got the thumb jimping in place and just went ahead and, and ran this on the belt sander to clean up any burrs when we drilled the holes. And the next step for us is to heat treat. We like to heat treat our blades before we grind the bevels uh, just to reduce the chance of the blade warping. We like to do it with the blade material a little thicker. And with the sanding belts we can get today, it's really not an issue to grind a hardened blade. So that's just the way we like to do it. So we're going to get started on the heat treat. We've got the blade heat treated and we're just going to grind off the scale material that's formed during the heat treat process and then we're going to temper it. I like to take that scale material off just so you can see the color when it's tempering. So we're going to take that off and we'll get started tempering it. Okay, we've got the knife tempered and heat treated and tempered. So the next step, we're going to start grinding the bevels. And I'm just going to take some, some more blue dockum layout fluid and make some scribe lines on here. So it'll help me when I'm grinding the bevels, give me kind of a guide where I need to grind to. So I've got a height gauge set to exactly, this, this height is exactly half the thickness of the steel that I'm using, which is 530 seconds. So I'm just going to mark a center line. take the drawing and measure how high these bevels are just using a pair of calipers and we'll transfer that onto the steel That just gives me some general guidelines on how high to grind the bevels and how thick to grind the edge thickness. So we'll get started grinding.
now we're going to etch our logo onto the blade. We've got it uh, stone washed and we like to, on some of these blades, we like to put our logo on after it's stone washed. Um, if you do it properly, you can get a, a good contrast on your logo. Like we did on this knife, we etched it after the fact and it just kind of makes your logo pop. So we're going to try to try that. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, we're going to see what happens here. Just going to clean the blade with a little bit of lacquer thinner. And we just cut our own lo logos out of vinyl. We have a vinyl plotter. The only, the only bad thing about these is they're good for one use, but if you got a vinyl plotter, you can get sheets of vinyl for next to nothing, and you can fit 100, 100 logos on a sheet. So it's really it's pretty cost effective. Tape up all the exposed areas around the logo. Just saltwater solution we use uh, to etch with. Yeah, we actually made a video about how you can make an etching machine just like this one. Uh, it's, it's just a little homemade etcher that we made. The only thing this one won't do that uh, that the commercial ones you can buy, uh, this one will not mark, it will only etch. Uh, etching actually removes the steel, it's like it's engraved into the steel, or marking will just leave a permanent black mark, almost like a sharpie, but, uh, but you, can't, you can't wash it off. It, you, could buff it, you could buff it off, uh, sand it off, but it, it's a pretty permanent mark. But you can't, can't mark the steel with this particular etcher, it only, it only etch. If you haven't seen that video, uh, we've got one uploaded. Go check it out if you're interested in, in how we made this. clean it up and see if we can uh, get that logo to pop against the, the acid etched blade. Some Windex and uh, just an old toothbrush. It's 
So once you get that carbon out of your etch, it shows that exposed steel and it makes a really nice contrast against that etched blade. Um, Worst case scenario, it didn't work, or you, you messed up your finish on your blade, you would just have to, you know, re-soak it in acid, re-tumble re it in your rock tumbler, and, and you're good to go. It looks like it turned out pretty good. I'm happy with that. So next step is we'll get the handles um, drilled and pinned and roughly shaped, and we'll get to that next.